Now, the Pandora Papers exposed the King of Jordan, the presidents of Ukraine, Kenya, Ecuador, former British Prime Minister Tony Blair, U.S. officials, celebrities like Shakira. It turns out her hips did lie. They lied like a lot about taxes, but like significantly about taxes. Right. Even sports stars like Cricket's Sachin Tendulkar from India are hiding large swaths of their wealth in tax free offshore accounts. This shadow economy, as it's called, shows how trillions of dollars are unaccounted for in the world's economy. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. Uh, before we get into this episode, I want to tell you guys about some really awesome virtual shows coming up and really awesome live in-person shows coming up as well. Uh, if you enjoy these podcast episodes, if you enjoy the Fork Full of Noodles, I write, produce, and record them on the last Thursday of each and every month. The last Thursday of each and every month, it's a whole new show, and you can be in the virtual audience via Zoom every single month. Tickets are available for these shows right now. I'm also producing virtual stand-up comedy shows where I work on new material, tell stories from the road, tell stories from my life that'll eventually become material that you'll see me perform live on in-person shows. So if you want to come kind of see the process and enjoy uh, a more casual, laid-back stand-up comedy show uh, via Zoom o o over o on a vir in a virtual setting, you can be anywhere in the world for these, these virtual shows. Uh, come check those shows out. Uh, those ticket links are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, I'm also going to be on the road with Ron Placone for a week and a half, two weeks, uh, somewhere around there in April, from April 16th through the 25th. On the road with Ron Placone, we're coming to Pittsburgh, Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, Burlington, Portland, Maine, Boston, Massachusetts, and New York City. So if you're in those cities or in cities surrounding those areas, please do come hang out with us. Grab your tickets. Again, you can go directly to my website, which is krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. Dot com. I hope to see some of you guys there. Uh, and while you're on my website, you can check out my stand-up comedy albums, most of which are available to download for free. Uh, you can also make donations, one-time donations, or become sustaining members. If you make monthly contributions, uh, you get a ton of bonus stuff, which includes uh, free tickets to both in-person shows and virtual shows as well plus bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content and a bunch of other really cool surprises. Uh, so check that out, uh, and you can also sign up for my email list. And that's important because I'm pulling back from how much I'm posting on social media. Uh, I, I started just kind of automatically doing that, and that has been a great help to my mental health and has helped me focus more on my writing, has helped me focus more on uh, rebuilding my personal relationships and improving not just my mental health, but also my physical health as well, because I can concentrate a little bit more on that. So the email list is a really, really great way to keep up to date on what I'm doing. Uh, re re email me back about you know what what you think about a particular piece or so on and so forth so i hope you do that again go to my website krishmohanhaha.com it's k r i s h m o h a n h a h a dot com thank you guys so much and now on to the episode so the biggest open secret in America is how massive the wealth gap between the richest few and the working class majority is 
right? Workers in America are treated pretty terribly on a regular basis. Classism in America is determined by the job you have. And think about it, right? We don't really treat the fast food worker or the retail employee with the same level of respect as someone in IT or civil engineering or pornography. These people get far more respect. But most interactions between a customer and a fast food worker ends in a screaming match with a Karen yelling, how hard is it to make a fucking hamburger? Listen, Karen, if it was that easy, why don't you jump back here and work the grill, huh? Meanwhile, our highways are crumbling, bridges are falling apart, and no one is looking at these civil engineers screaming, how hard is it to maintain a growing economy's infrastructure? <laughs> the, anger, the anger is very misdirected at the working class and the most financially vulnerable. But what can you really expect from a country that you know, has the collective maturity of a teenager? The real question should be, why the hell is the infrastructure crumbling? And why are workers dealing with all of these societal issues? And the answer comes from the existence of people like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. Billionaires have been preventing progress from occurring in our societies, you know, way back when they were just sweet, sweet little millionaires, just those sweet millionaires. So since, since 1978, the wealth of billionaires have increased over 1,300%, while average worker pay has only gone up 18%. As of today, a CEO makes over 350 times that of the lowest paid employee. Now, capitalists say that this is a reflection of the, quote, market for skills or talent. Right? They're claiming that the high pay of a CEO is because of the demand and skill it takes to be a CEO. Now, I didn't realize that staring at a half glass of whiskey in front of a fire pretending to contemplate something deep was that difficult of a job. I mean, really, if there was a larger call for hiring CEOs, then we'd see a lot more CEOs getting hired, right? But every time I pass a target with a now hiring sign, it doesn't say that they're looking for a CEO. Look, I get it. The job of a CEO might be difficult, but it's is it really quantifiably 350 times more difficult than someone who's putting their physical body on the line for the sake of profits? I would very confidently wager to say, uh, fucking no, I don't think that's how much it is. Right During the pandemic, a billionaires like Jeff Bezos uh, you know, grew their wealth by 19%. This is their personal wealth, not just their business wealth. And someone like Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon, Washington Post, and the owner of a very nice lava side property at the darkest, deepest depths of hell, is currently on his way to become a trillionaire now. Elon Musk has so much money that less than 1% of his wealth can eradicate world hunger by ensuring everyone at least one meal per day, which would mean that less than 3% of his wealth, everybody on the planet could get like three meals a day. But as they say, there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? If Elon took that minuscule amount of wealth to feed everyone, then we'd likely have to say, thank you, Mr. Musk. May we have some more? As he sits on his throne made of a Tesla flamethrower, and a Tesla rocket, smoking weed with his financial advisor and czar of bros, Joe Rogan. But we're taught that if you have that much wealth, you earned it by working hard and staying true to yourself and your cause. And this is a myth. If we really lived in a meritocracy, the single mom working three jobs to ensure a good life for her kids would be close to becoming a trillionaire instead of a balding demon that took a joyride to the stratosphere so he can send the most expensive dick pic to the entire planet. Look, Jeff Bezos didn't create Amazon in a garage with nothing but the grit of his shoes and the twinkle in his eye. This is how Jeff Bezos actually got his money. 
because it wasn't the novelty of Amazon alone that catapulted it to the center of the internet, so much as the absurd head start that an initial $300,000 investment that Jeff's parents gave him. Elon Musk didn't create Tesla with nothing but the sweat on his brow and the rainbows in his heart. This is how Elon Musk made his money. And although Musk likes to play up his version of the everyman story too, his family is most infamously known for his father's ownership of a lucrative emerald mine and role as a property developer in apartheid South Africa. These people didn't start from nothing. It wasn't just hard work. Billionaires never get there alone. They get there in any combination of three ways. One, family wealth and privilege. Two, labor exploitation. And three, government help. Look, the only bootstraps both of these men, and I'm, I'm using that term very loosely in this context, the only bootstraps both these men have are the ones they stole from the working class. They start their business with low interest loans or inheritance from very old money acquired through slavery, but to maintain a steady growth to infinite wealth and cash, they've utilized other methods of exploitation. Wage theft is a big way these corporations steal money directly from the workers. Very simply, wage theft is when you don't get paid even though you're supposed to. Whether it's because you worked overtime but it wasn't counted, had your tips withheld or not compensated for on a slow day, were misclassified as an independent contractor, were refused benefits as an employee, or just straight up didn't get your check, there are at least a dozen different ways your boss can steal the money that you're entitled to so that he can eat it. I mean, I assume that's what they do with it, right? They, they eat it. They're obviously not spending it, so they must be doing something. Anyway, the sad reality is that this happens to millions of American workers every year. While the individual amounts are pretty small if you take them week by week, added up, they get into the billions of dollars. At the low end, estimates that only include minimum wage violations total around $15 billion a year stolen from American workers. $15 billion. Already $2 billion more than the number we get from all those other forms of theft. At the high end, estimates that count several different forms of wage theft more than triple that number. And you end up with a whopping $50 billion price tag per year in America and thousands out of the average worker's hands. That's really bad. By a lot. But it's only the tip of a much bigger iceberg. And in most cases, fighting this problem legally is almost impossible. And in some of these, in some of these low wages, workers are undocumented immigrants that get threatened by deportation. And remember, uh, exploitative capitalists are touted as the best and the brightest in our society, despite being the opposite of that. It's impossible to get that rich by legal means. The only way you get that rich is by committing the largest and most elaborate highway robbery that mankind has ever seen. Over the last few years, we've had a large number of documents surface that show us how the enormously wealthy hide their money from the rest of the world using tax havens. The most recent of these revelations are from the Pandora Papers. The journalists that investigated this problem revealed about 12 million documents showing some of the most richest and most prominent figures in politics, entertainment, and leadership hiding their money in offshore accounts located in islands in the middle of several oceans, like primarily just all of the oceans. And to be fair, the journalists did question the oceans about this as well, right? Did they know about the tax scam? But you know, the oceans didn't really know a whole lot and they got really confused about what the concept of money was and then the oceans just kept pointing out how it's like a tool that's mostly being used to destroy like everything and everyone we all love. And then it had a lot of questions about how crypto works. So the, the, the journalists are no longer going to be talking to the oceans uh, like ever. There's there's going to be no journalist that will ever interview an ocean ever again. Now, look, 12 million do documents is like a lot of paper. Right. So these journalists had to make a choice on the names they revealed to the public. And in order to get the attention of the general public, it has to be like a really sexy financial scandal, which I know sounds like I'm calling the color beige exciting, but this is the age we live in, 
right? Financial crimes happen and they're not as riveting as a Law and Order episode, but they are immensely catastrophic despite their very boring nature. And we all really, really have to start paying attention to this. Now, the Pandora Papers exposed the King of Jordan, the presidents of Ukraine, Kenya, Ecuador, former British Prime Minister Tony Blair, U.S. officials, celebrities like Shakira. It turns out her hips did lie. They lied like a lot about taxes, but like significantly about taxes, right? Even sports stars like Cricket's Sachin Tendulkar from India are hiding large swaths of their wealth in tax-free offshore accounts. This shadow economy, as it's called, shows how trillions of dollars are unaccounted for in the world's economy. The United States is the second largest tax haven in the world, only behind the Caribbean islands. And this is why the U.S. is trying to be so friendly to the rich, right? The states can't be number two in anything, let alone uh, rich people. You know, the, the, the United States anthem is, we're number one, we're number one. I mean, I hear that more than I hear the Star Spangled Banner, right? And right now, there are only two states in America that operate as a perfect tax haven, Delaware and South Dakota. And this makes sense, since the climate in both these states are so terrible that the only thing that wants to live there is a shell corporation. I thought it might be interesting for your listeners to know a little bit about the leading example here in the United States. Uh, that's the state of South Dakota, a state you don't hear all that much about, uh, sparsely populated in the Midwest of the United States, but they've taken the lead, and they took the lead years ago. The story of South Dakota starts in 1981, when they were the first state to say there is no limit, no cap on interest rates. If you have a credit card, the credit card company, the bank ultimately that lends you the money that is being in play every time you use a credit card, it can charge any interest rate it wants. There is no legal limit. Other states didn't do that. Many other states haven't done it to this day, but South Dakota did it. And by the way, that's the reason many of you listening, if you look closely at where the headquarters are of the bank or the credit card company that you deal with, you will discover, perhaps to your surprise, that it's South Dakota. And since very few people live there, you have a mystery which I've just cleared up for you. They're there because they want to be free to charge whatever interest rate they want without a legal cap. And that's why South Dakota got what? Well, it got a lot of banks to open up offices there. They were modest offices, but they had to pay a lawyer to do the paperwork. They had to pay some accountants. They had to rent some space. They brought a few jobs, not many. And South Dakota said, oh, this is great. And a lot of banks will come. And they got the idea. And a few years later, they began to pass one law after another. The most important of these had to do with setting up trusts. Trust is just a legal instrument. And the most famous of these are called settler trusts. A billionaire anywhere in the world arrives or sends a flunky to go to South Dakota and to set up a trust and to deposit millions or billions into this trust. They name a trustee, that's somebody there in South Dakota to manage it all, and a beneficiary, their mother, their son, their daughter. And after a while, they amended the law to allow the benefactor to name himself as the beneficiary, the fellow putting the money in or the woman putting the money in to the account. And the beauty of the law is that no one can know who it is. If you come to the person who put the money in, they say, oh, no, I don't know a thing about it. It's not mine. It's in the hands of the trustee. The law specifies this. If you ask the trustee or the beneficiary, they say, oh, no, it's not my money. I'm just a trustee. Or it's not my money. I'm just a beneficiary. In the end, 
not only does nobody have to give anybody any information, but they allow these trusts to exist, get ready for this, in perpetuity. In other words, not only can you put a billion dollars in there, but you can give the billion to your descendants, whoever's there after you die, and there's no inheritance tax, there's no estate tax, nobody knows anything about it, if money moves in and out without anybody having any record that they can expose you for having stolen the money or expose you for having evaded taxes for 50 years or anything else. It's a gamble for the rich. And it's important for an American audience to understand that South Dakota has been doing this for the last 40 years. This is the rest of the show, by the way. We're just going to take a quick... Po no, I'm kidding. Uh, the, <laughs> Professor Richard Bulls is awesome. But what he just described is a sociopath's paradise, which is way less cool than a gangster's paradise and significantly less funny than an Amish paradise. You know, at least they give you butter at an Amish paradise, right? A sociopath's paradise, you have to pay for the butter, the bowl, and then there's also a churn tax. Very disappointing. No, none of the Amish really like the churn tax. But these laws that transform states into tax havens where dollar bills outnumber the humans are written and fun funded by conservative think tanks like the Heritage Foundations, which was founded by Richard Scaife, the grandson of Andrew Mellon, a prominent banker from my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who was also known as the prophet of trickle down. So, you know, this guy had good ideas. The money held in these offshore accounts and tax havens don't go anywhere. They're not used for anything. They're they're not even using this money to film their eyes wide shut parties on the beach of some island in the South Pacific. It's, this is a total waste. I mean, it's trillions of dollars that could be used to end poverty, starvation, homelessness, and fund public health care, scientific advancement, and get every single teenager on the planet a porn subscription for life. Okay, all this money is just sitting on an island, sipping Mai Tais, contemplating how meaningless existence really is. Yeah, guys, it turns out that money without a true purpose is really, really depressing. Besides this blatantly illegal move, people still want to be billionaires and are okay with the massive benefits they received. And this is because capitalism is a system that tells everyone that they themselves can eventually become billionaires. For starters, vanishingly few people ever become billionaires. In the US, it's around 600 people, or 0.0002% of the population. Perversely, however, the myth of the self-made billionaire tries to trick you into believing that anybody, yes, even you, dear viewer, could one day be just like them. After all, if they can do it, so can you. Look, you have better odds at winning the lottery or getting struck by lighting, lightning, or being anal probed by a very kinky alien. I mean, if you really think about it, the alien likely has to have a sex addiction problem if they're gonna use warp speed technology just to come to Earth for butt stuff. It needs to go to a 12 step program is what that alien needs to do. But Ohio State and Cornell universities published their findings on, a, on psychological experiments about how the public views the rich. The more the public sees the ultra-rich through the lens that treats these rich people as isolated individuals, the more comfortable the public tends to be with the enormous concentration of wealth. And this plays into the bullshit American dream that we're force-fed on a daily basis, right? Work hard and you'll be rich. So... I got to ask again, right? Why isn't the single mom working three jobs and 90 hours a week to make sure her kid can afford food and shelter now and college later, not the wealthiest woman in America? I mean, is, is it because 90 hours a week isn't long enough to work? And if you answered yes to that, congrats. You're likely a much larger sociopath than Elon Musk and aren't fit to be around organic things as you are a cancer on our very existence. 
look, the point is the chances of you, the average American, have, have to becoming a billionaire is slim to none. The system co-ops terms like greed is good and life is hard just to justify exploitation and call these exploiters geniuses. Right? These billionaires shouldn't be applauded or revered. They should be imprisoned on the same island that they hid their money on. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of Forkful of Noodles. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please give it a big old thumbs up, uh, a retweet, or, and, and share this out with as many people as you can. Share it with a friend. Share it with an enemy. Share it with anybody that you think would find some kind of value from this episode. Uh, the, the focus of this channel is and always will continue to be a, a historical and psychological lens on various sociopolitical topics, and I will do my best to uh, break them down and and uh, add add some comedic flavor so we can <laughs> we can all enjoy uh, the the depressing information that that uh, uh, that we all kind of have to contend with and hopefully drive positive change in our lives. So if you enjoyed that, if you if that that is uh, a goal that you enjoy, please, please do hit the like button. Please do make sure that you're subscribed to my channels uh, and please do share this out with as many people as you can. Uh, and if you want to become a sustaining member, make a one time donation, um, come to a virtual show, come to a in person live show and want to know when I'm coming to a city near you, you can do so directly on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, I post videos on this channel uh, every Monday, every Thursday, and then infrequently throughout the weeks as well. Uh, so please do make sure you're subscribed. Please do make sure you're on the email list to get uh, new information from me and, and just a list of all the videos I've produced throughout the week. Uh, so, uh, that, again, all of that is available directly on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, but till then, thank you guys for tuning in. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And we'll see you on the road. Bye, guys.